What's up guys? I am Glenn with Glenn's Auto Performance. Came down to the shop this morning to shoot a quick video and bring some awareness to a new product from Tick Performance. We have been working with Tick over the past few months to help them develop a, an adjustable clutch master cylinder kit for the 99 to 07 GM trucks. It will fit both the factory 5-speed NV running gear that the trucks came originally with, or more specifically, it's designed to resolve some of the pedal throw issues that we have on the 6-speed T56, Tremec Magnum, and TR6060 swaps that are getting popular on this platform. So if you guys follow me on social media or if you've done any research about the 6-speed swaps, you will recognize the truck behind me. It is the Gap single cab. It is my personal 99 single cab that has had a ton of work done to it most recently of which has been the swap to a Tremec Magnum F transmission. And ever since I got that swap done, I have been working on trying to determine what some of the shortcomings of the combination were and identifying what we needed to do to bring some products to market that might resolve some of those shortcomings. And from the moment I put this thing on the ground, one of the first things I noticed was that the clutch disengagement and the pedal positioning at disengagement was not what I wanted. Um, it really felt like the truck didn't have enough throw. So I knew that clutch hydraulics were kind of at the forefront of what we needed to address. And I had taken some precautions on this truck to try to maximize the amount of fluid movement that I could get to disengage the clutch. I knew on this combination with it being a twin disc and a little bit more on the radical side of the spectrum that I would need every little bit of throw that I could get to get it disengaged and you know it, it worked it got the job done the truck's drivable but it really wasn't to a point that made it comfortable to really drive aggressively the the disengagement happened at the floor and when I say at the floor I mean carpet cut out of the way firewall insulation cut out of the way on the sheet metal at the floor is where the clutch finally breaks on this thing so hopefully this new uh, product from Tick Performance will give me what I'm looking for in terms of allowing me to adjust my ideal pedal height at disengagement and to provide a greater amount of fluid volume for each you know, inch or so of travel in the pedal uh, to provide disengagement earlier in that pedal travel. So I'm going to go over to the bench. We'll take a look at what their kit comes with and how it compares to the original master cylinder and go from there. Really quick before we go over to the bench and take a look at what the Tick Master Cylinder Kit comes with, I wanted to address what I mentioned just a moment ago about having done a couple of things to help maximize pedal throw on this combination. Um, just so you guys are not left hanging, I wanted to clarify that. So on my particular truck, some of the aftermarket companies like Perfection Clutch make a cast um, iron, I guess, or cast some sort of alloy master cylinder to replace the original plastic style. I did do that. Um, I do think it's a little bit better design than the OEM plastic. I don't think either design is really that robust. I mean, it's designed for your average work truck, not guys that are trying to put twin disc clutches and stuff. So you can't really expect that much from it. But I did the, the actual metal master cylinder. I converted it to 4AN and I ran a 4AN, you know, braided line um, down to the slave cylinder. I am running the factory GM um, F-body slave, 4th gen F-body, that's 98 to 04, like the LS1 cars. Run a factory GM slave on my clutch setup. And I also use Atomic Fabrication and Performance's steel pedal box assembly or clutch pedal bracket. And I mean, no matter what you choose, I would recommend that AFP bracket assembly, no matter what. The factory clutch pedal box is plastic and it's a known issue it fails on stock trucks and when you start putting these heavier aftermarket clutches on here it becomes even more of an issue so um, i'll see if you guys can see that real quick under the dash it's obviously tight down there but i think you can sort of see where i've got it bolted in you can sort of see the silver hardware up there and the uh the black uh, painted metal for that clutch pedal bracket if there's any one thing you're gonna do, even on your factory five-speed truck, but especially if you're gonna be six-speed swapping your truck, I would recommend that AFP clutch pedal bracket assembly because the original bracket just isn't gonna cut it. It flexes too much, and that, pedal, that metal AFP bracket cuts out some of that flex and also eliminates the possibility of snapping it like you often see done on the original pedal bracket assemblies. All right, I've got Tick's Master Cylinder Kit laid out here. I'm gonna go through some of the stuff, show you what it comes with. 
So of course, it's the core of the kit is a 7 8 bore tilt and master cylinder. We have Tix uh, adapter that they designed for the trucks. This uses the same twist in style connection that the factory master cylinder used. It's a remote reservoir setup, um, so you've got the remote reservoir adapter and then Tix bracket set up in their remote reservoir line for the remote reservoir and then the adapter to go to the pedal assembly that will adapt to the tilt and slave cylinder. In addition to that, they supply a line that has the factory GM style quick disconnect that will fit the Silverado slave or the T56 style F body slave from the 98 to 04 LS1 and LS6 Camaros. I've also got the original master cylinder out of my truck sitting here so you can kind of compare things side by side. I do have the kind of the updated design that some of the companies are making now that are cast iron. The original piece was plastic. Um, so this is a little bit more robust than what you might find on an OEM truck, but it still leaves a lot to be desired on the six speed. I just really feel that it didn't move enough fluid volume, at least for the amount of pedal throw that I had to really be comfortable with the amount of disengagement I got. If you can see those side by side, once I've got this tilt and master cylinder put together with Tix adapter package, this will look a little bit more similar here on the back side. All right, let's get this put together and uh, we'll get it thrown on the truck. All right, getting ready to put this thing in. I went ahead and pre-assembled it on the bench. So we've got the tilt and slave bolted to Tix master cylinder adapter. And we've also got their um, clutch pedal rod assembly pre-assembled here. What I did is I just kind of lined these two up and I assembled this to be roughly the same length as the original push rod was. I figured that will place the pedal around the same height as it was originally with the OEM style setup. And then it'll give me a good spot to adjust from. So depending on where the clutch disengages at that point, we can make our adjustments to set pedal height to our own preference. So we'll go ahead and try to get this thing put in. I'm going to try to put it in assembled. My combination is pretty tight compared to some of you guys because I've got like fuel pump relays and wiring and stuff in this area. So I might not be able to get this in in one piece, but I'm going to try because it certainly make things easier. Um, so we'll give that a shot now and I'll let you guys know how it plays out. This little piece here is the OEM pedal cup. This goes, it's like an insert that goes in the pedal that the end of this push rod slips into, but it goes on the push rod first and then the whole assembly goes into the pedal. So I like to put a little bit of grease in there. Um, that way, you know, it just reduces some of the friction between the plastic and the metal of the push rod. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease that up real quick and slip it on the Tick Master Cylinder push rod before we slide that thing into place. All right, we've got it in there. I went ahead and removed my fuel pump relays or on a factory truck that has cruise control, the cruise control module will be here. I'd recommend moving that out of the way so you can get your hands in here. It does take quite a bit of effort to twist into place. Um, that's not unusual with this style of master cylinder, especially when you start doing a billet aluminum kind of adapter piece. Now, the AFP bracket is known to be tight as well, which I am running on my setup, so that may have contributed to it as well. There's a little rubber seal that goes on the back side of that adapter from your original master cylinder. And I had to kind of trim that just a little bit to make it a little thinner. And then I had to lubricate it up because it was trying to drag when I was trying to twist this into place. So adding a little bit of lubricant to that helped allow me to twist it in. But having everything out of the way where I could really get a good grip on that thing is what ultimately needed to happen in order for me to get it twisted into place. But it's in now. We're going to go ahead and install the remote reservoir adapter on this, which will face forward. And then we'll get the reservoir in place and the lines connected and go from there. All right, here it is in place. We've got the reservoir bracket and the reservoir in place. We've got the reservoir plumbed into the remote reservoir adapter on the master cylinder. We've got everything tucked in there. Now again, my setup's super tight. I've got three fuel pump relays all set up up here and all my wiring for the Holly EFI kind of passes through a grommet there. So once this is in place on my truck, you really can't see it down there, but you can see how everything goes together. I really like Tick's mounting solution for the remote reservoir there. 
they really did a good job making everything on this kit bolt on. You don't have to drill anything, you don't have to cut anything, you don't have to fabricate anything, you don't have to worry about where to mount the master cylinder reservoir. I mean, everything is well thought out and it includes all the hardware you need to get it bolted up. Um, that reservoir bracket, it just bolts right to the master cylinder bolts. It sweeps right underneath the master cylinder, picks up both sides so it's real secure uh, where the master cylinder bolts to the booster. And then it hangs your master cylinder reservoir up here up top where it's actually much easier to fill and to monitor fluid level in than the original truck master was because the original truck master had an integrated reservoir way down there on the master cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing filled up. We'll get it bled and we'll try to take it for a test drive. I don't know if that'll be in this video. The roads are still wet. We had that storm pass through our area a couple days ago. So uh, I'm running out of time this morning too, but I'm gonna try to get some fluid in this thing, at least get it bled. And then uh, if I don't get the drive time in this video, I'll follow up with another one, let you know my driving impressions once we get it uh, adjusted and bled and get it back on the road. Quick little tip here when you're getting ready to fill this reservoir up and bleed this thing with the way that the feed line to the master cylinder sweeps when it's installed uh, a little bit of an air pocket can collect here because this sits a little bit higher than the lowest point of the hose just in order to sweep it into that reservoir so what i did is i filled this thing with fluid and i uh, disconnected it from the tick mount so that i can pull it off of here and in doing so it allows me to tip that upwards so that I can start draining that air out. You can see the bubbles there coming up into this reservoir now. We got that line straight so that there's no low points and it'll just feed that fluid right down into the reservoir or into the master cylinder rather from the reservoir. So I'll do this until I stop seeing air bubbles and then I'll bolt it back up and then I'll bleed it. But that'll just keep from pushing a bunch of air into your lines and into the slave zone or just make the bleeding process a little bit easier. All right, so I've got this thing adjusted where I want it, I think. We're uh, pretty much finished with the install here, ready to take a test drive. I've got to pick up some hardware for my seat harness installation and put some fresh E85 in the tank this morning, so I figured I'd catch some in-car footage, let you know my impressions of this new uh, Tick adjustable master cylinder kit and how it drives, and uh, you know, knock out some errands at the same time. So let's go ahead and get this thing pulled out. Engagement between gears. I know that I'm fully depressed on the clutch. The gears are actually trans. 
a performance vehicle. I personally like a little bit heavier clutch wheel. I don't like when it feels like a Honda Civic. You know, I, I like a little bit of feedback through the pedal, and I think this provides that. I'm happy with that. Um, more than anything, it feels more connected and predictable. When I'm disengaging the clutch, um, trying to slip it to get the truck rolling, the engagement point is a lot more predictable in terms of where the clutch starts to come on at and where it starts to fully brake as well. Um, it really cleaned up a lot of the sloppiness in the clutch feel that I had with the OEM style master cylinder, so I'm super happy with that. And I'm surprised just how much adjustment there is. I did take this thing around the, just around the building when I first put it on, and I had the push rod adjusted to be the same length as the original push rod but it was still grabbing a little bit low. Much improved over the original clutch pedal setup, but it, it was still grabbing a little bit low, so I, I adjusted it up just a little bit, I thought, but it actually moved the engagement point and the pedal travel up quite a bit. So again, it'll, it'll first start to grip about a third of the way up, and it fully breaks, and it's all the way out by maybe two-thirds and three-quarters of the way up, and there's no free play. I mean, when I put my just the weight of my foot on the pedal, it, it hardly moves. It, it's a nice, firm feel underneath your foot. There isn't any of that free pedal travel. Um, so it definitely drives more like what a combination like this truck should drive like. You know, it feels more like the Corvette Camaro style setup than it did, you know, a truck with an extra six gear in it. So super happy with that. I definitely would recommend this for any of you guys that have done the six-speed swaps, but even the guys that have the factory five-speeds, again, you know, it's a more robust upgrade for that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have any hesitation to run it in a factory-style truck either. But with the Tremex, uh, especially if you're running the F-body slave cylinder like I am, I really think that it improves the clutch feel significantly, and it just contributes to a better overall driving experience, um, and it's a lot more predictable and precise in the that it engages and breaks. Um, ever since I got this thing together, this has been a pain point of mine, and this product here has completely resolved it, so I'm super happy with how that came out. That being said, I'll end the video here. If you guys are looking to do this upgrade, let me know. We're an authorized dealer for Tick Performance. I will post the link on our site below for this master cylinder upgrade. Happy to get you guys set up 